Uh, we're waiting for Evgen to join us, and then we can start. I don't want to do any introduction of the Tropic Square because I want to leave it up to our guests. Uh, they, they will be the best ones to, to explain it to all of us. What is Tropic Square? Uh, okay, at first I would like to thank you for organizing this and for the invitation. Uh, back to the question, um, Tropic Square. Tropic Square is a cheap design startup uh, with the focus on security uh, with a really unique project. Uh, we are developers of the first auditable and secure element uh, with a truly open approach. We see ourselves as an icebreaker in the old-fashioned world of chip development. Uh, I, one of our missions is to break for the introduction. Uh, would you like to tell us about your pre-tropic background? If you won't like to tell us, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious and interested. Can you please do it? Uh, okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, but uh, I don't want to go too deep. Uh, so my whole career is uh, connected with the development and production of electronics. Uh, it's my passion, my hobby. And uh, when I met Slash and Stick back in, I think, 2013, yeah, I think it was 2013, they needed help with the finali finalizing uh, of the Trezor One. Uh, in that, uh, I, I remember that very well because I know that my girlfriend, uh, now my wife, was really suspicious Sorry, uh, when I told her that I need to go out with a friend for a coffee at 7 p.m. Uh, so I have even a selfie with Slash from that meeting. And this was the first meeting when we uh, had a serious, serious talk uh, about founding a new company uh, now known as Tropic Square. Thank you, Evgen. Uh, can I pass it to you, Jan? Can you tell us about your pre-tropic background? Sure. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's simply simply put, I spent my career, which is almost 18 years now, in uh, chip design uh, industrial area. And, you know, by, by chip design was uh, various assignments at the time. So I started work for, for local Czech companies where we developed um, embedded systems, which has a FPGA uh, as, a, as a center chip in the design, and FPGA is a field programmable gate array. So it's it's a it's a you know chip silicon which is fabricated as a flexible device, and then you have to configure it to provide the certain functions. And the the way how you configure that is, is very similar to the way how we designed the ASICs, like a fixed uh, silicon product. So the, 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 these approaches are very very similar. So that's why basically you know. During the time switching from A6 to FPGA and then back to FPGA is, is kind of okay-ish and uh, a normal way to designing as, as, as we do the de chip design for, for A6 for the fixed configuration and, you know, uh, fixed function baked chip in the end, you still use the FPGAs for evaluation and testing or subs subsystems and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's been, you know... 18 years sounds like like long time. Sometimes it feels like yeah, it's been yesterday. So it's a very incredible time. And most recently, before uh, before you know, joining Tropic Square, I actually spent uh, you know, four years in the UK. I went there to to work for Altera, FPJ under at the time, which uh, quite soon became the acquired by Intel. So yeah, we had a you know nice time there uh, with my family, but time. You know the Brexit thing and some other family reasons sort of uh, make clear that uh, it's time to go back home. So you know around the mid three year of 2019, which I was started looking to find out what will be the next phase, next project I, I can work on after we relocate back, and you know, started to simply talking to all friends from the industry. So there there is some. You know, chip design industry in Czech Republic, although it's not that big, so everybody knows everyone. And actually, I've been told that there, there is a, you know, some guys or Czech company who do something with Bitcoin, and they are crazy enough that they want to make their own chip, and even should be open source, which you know, to, to the, the established vendors sounds like a no go at all. And 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 the friend who told it that me said oh, that might be a Kind of good, uh, good opportunity for your good project. You might like it, so yeah, get introduced. You know, met Slash and Stick, and uh, we started to kind of uh, this uh, huge vision. You know, reviewing and, and and trying to put to the reality, which is what we are working till today. 
Thanks. Sounds sounds like a destiny story. Uh, all the consequences, <laughs> the global ones. Yeah. Ready to this. Definitely, definitely. You know, I, 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 I yeah. I, easily, I can say I was preparing for this mission all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you on board. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, let's let's maybe move to the first topic. It's the chip manufacturing and its current conditions today. Uh, no doubt that the industry is massive, and the numbers of transistors created in only 2017 had 20 trillion per second. I'm I'm now checking the numbers. Uh, I'm not taking it from 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 my head. Uh, for those who like numbers, it's hundreds of quadrillion quintri hundreds of quintillions per year. So a lot. A lot. And what does this industry lands landscape look like? Uh, to, to specify who are the major players, if you may tell us about this, and how does that affect Tropic Square in particular as a hardware startup? Those numbers are hard to imagine. It's hard to pronounce them and even harder to imagine them. And uh, yeah, this uh, environment is, is not friendly for startups uh, like Tropic Square or small startups like Tropic Square. And uh, it's almost impossible to go directly to a producer, a foundry. So that is why we are, uh, or, or why we have a strong partner and going uh, to the foundry with this strong partner, partner, not directly, because it's, it's, not impossible. it's not possible for us. Yeah, you know, uh, just to comment from my side, you know, I, I probably don't want to comment about the things that chip makers or car manufacturers are, are missing the chips. It's, it's you know, for, for the newspapers probably. But what's really interesting is that the, the you know, chip design is, is very complex. And if we say we do chip design, we are at the very, very beginning of this whole chain, which is more like to, to design the function of the chip. And then obviously there's a chain of tools and, and techniques and, and companies in, in the supply chain to uh, to make this, you know, reality as a whole, and uh, this is quite normal. You know, if you have a, this massive environment, massive, uh, massive system, which just you know needs to be very precise and, and produce and very high efficiency, it has to be organized. So, so the fact that we don't have a direct access to the foundry is just you know, uh, productivity thing and obviously there, there are supply chains designed for it so there are the, the, the partners who are doing the aggregation of the small designs and then you know getting the better time slots in the foundry etc so hopefully this massive you know or new new situation in the industry will not affect us too much at least we don't have a, any critical indications right now And if we're talking about the current conditions of the industry and the supply chain uh, with so few producers and long wait times, how does Tropic Square go about planning production for something that is still being prototyped? Uh, we, will, we will be talking about the chip itself a bit further on, uh, just checking the ground now. Um, the producers have still some fixed and open capacities for uh, prototyping for a new project new projects because it's important for them from many reasons like uh, they can get uh, a new customers in the future and uh, of course uh, if they close the gates for the new projects and new new development uh, and this boom will uh, go lower then they have a problem later on maybe and we plan our initial production uh, in the lower millions of pieces of units, which is still a sampling for the manufacturers yeah, with a small chip like uh, our secure element with small, I mean, the, the area or the package. And of course, that can dramatically change during next year, we will see. But hopefully not. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we just you know checking regularly with our supply chain and 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 actually it, it might be interesting interesting insight into the industry. You know, it's and maybe some someone from our listeners know better details who can send a link or something like that. But uh, if you if you hear that the you know it takes long time to get a chip, you know the 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 tens of weeks for for supply chain 
you know, lead times it's, it's it's pretty normal and the whole the chip industry is you know at least it used to be in, in maybe maybe it's old environment when when things were more you know before covid when things were more um, predictable but it was a typical that you have a lead times you know half a year or so and if there's some problem you you might get easily go to 40 50 weeks you know it's it's not that that new from from this industry but what is interesting that um, uh, typically there is a you know uh, process like a design registration basically the the chip vendors through the uh, supply chain partners and distributors they they you know know what type of design you are working on and with which uh, chips you will need to to get for this uh, for this development obviously you know if as it's with, with every development it's it's pretty tricky because when you start such engagement with these people they will start asking about the volume yeah? what's your estimate for per year what's the volume for the for the lifetime and all this stuff and it's it's hard to get these numbers especially for us uh, like uh, tech guys you know when, when you do design you don't like these discussions but uh Definitely, the system is kind of designed to 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 estimate these things. So something probably got wrong recently, and uh, maybe it's not, not no longer true this this approach. But it will be really interesting to see whether there were some signs of, of you know some something that's going to change massively, just from this uh, data which in the industry uh, must have been. And what is the current state of the secure element markets? Um, like how much choice does a hardware company have when it comes to these types of chips? Like, I mean, it's, it's super specific and could be super strict. I, I have no idea. Uh, I think, or as, as we have the feedback from the market, the importance is, is growing and the future potential is huge. Uh, one of the important aspects uh, are the end customers, of course, who are, uh, from our from our experience or feedback, we have uh, unaware of the vulnerability of their devices, and they think the software security is sufficient, or even they doesn't not address security at all. Um, for hardware companies, right, uh, our choices on the market. But if you want uh, a transparent and fully auditable solution, you have to wait a few months. Uh, in meantime, you still can get in touch with us during the development. Just don't be shy. We are open to discuss uh, with everybody. And uh, just contact me and Jan or, or our company directly. Yeah, and then, you know, to, to your question, what's the current state like? If you mean, you know, it's easy to, to, to buy a secure element or what is the lead time, then my answer is I don't know. But I, I mean, the secure element market, it's, uh, you know, obviously it's dominated by, by you know, government IDs and, uh, and the payment cards type of devices, which are, you know, huge volumes and the main uh, silicon uh, suppliers or uh, companies, you know, focusing on these ones, which would be NXP, Infineon, and others, they, you know, cover this market. Uh, that's uh, that's no doubt. And uh, the, the 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 problem, you know, for the uh, for the electronic system designers is uh, well, I mean, that the the overall adoption of the secure elements, like it's still not something what is must have a feature on the system. So that's only only few products are uh, you know security you know for designed for security or with security in mind, and then they these type of products might have a secure elements. When we did the research, you know, was the situation with the secure elements and, and talking to, to to various partners in industry, they basically saying, yeah, well. If you do the design, you will uh, make a provision for a secure element in the system, which is pretty easy because typically there is a simple serial interface. It costs you just two wires or two pins on, on a microcontroller or four. You know that's that's no, no, no big deal. Uh, typically, they are pin compatible with other devices which you might have already in the system. So if you want to start playing with the secure element, it's not necessarily. Uh, that you have to change your layout of the PCB and things like that. So there might be a bunch of the designs already kind of ready to at least development uh, and testing of the secure elements. 
But the problem they, they say is that basically it's not a custom facing feature. So customers not asking for it in the first place. And obviously it's not uh, something was then that gets the highest priority in the in the development cycle because there is always something what you, you should be you know looking at, etc. So so I think this is the uh, the problem. And and the specific thing, you know, like the, the requirement for the transparency and auditability that that's completely different uh, different uh, you know point of view and, and different mindset so obviously it's not a, not a mainstream and it will not be probably any time because always it's a kind of relative measure and somebody takes a security more seriously somebody just don't care so it really depends on the application Yeah, and tell us about uh, the Tropic Square chip in particular. What is the MVP for the Tropic Square? Like, when what does it have that other others don't? Uh, from my non-technical side, because Jan is the technical guru, and uh, our chip will be designed specially to store critical sensitive data, uh, all without compromising the Tropic Square uh, Satoshi Labs vision of auditability. That's something. Uh, what is not available on the market and we see this as a necessary next step to increase the security of electronic devices so the closest closed source hardware needs to start to go the open or transparent path like software did many years ago from our point of view And, uh, you know, from... Sorry, go on, Sorry. Go on, Yeah, so, so from the, you know, technical standpoint, it's, uh, you know, all about you to implement the chip, make something useful, which in our view is really the minimalistic solution, which provides the, the few key functions, and it's essentially the secure storage, authenticated by a, you know, pin, which user can enter, and with this pin, you will authenticate to the memory, which gives you a, you know, back the high entropy number, which means that the good number, which you can easily use in the cryptographic operations. And then from the application side, you can use this for, you know, generating the decryption keys and, and encrypt user data, for example, on the external flash, something like that. But, uh, you know, we want to focus on a sort of toolbox type of the chip. Like uh, there has to be a microcontroller which communicates to our, our chip and it will basically tell what it has to be done. So at this point, we rather focusing on implementing minimalistic functions in isolations. And then, you know, if you need to combine multiple functions together, you can, and, and you can do it on the, on the microcontroller. We're just going this way. And, uh, the reason for that is simplicity, so we can easily validate the functions in isolation and, and uh, you know, critical part for, for, for our design or critical aspect is the physical security of the chip. So which means we need to, you know, it's, it's something what we can't only simulate in, in our design environment. So we need to basically build a chip, go through the whole process of fabrication, get the physical chip, go to the lab, measure it, squeeze it, you know, test it and uh, get the feedback about the characteristics design in and then, you know, adapt in the design process and do it again. And who will be or who are the end customers for a company like Tropic Square? Uh, will it be will it be a solution specific to crypto? I assume not. It's yeah, you are right. <laughs> it's not specific to it's not specific solution for a crypto, even though the first customer will be Trezor, and uh, of course we hope there will be others from 
crypto industry. Uh, when uh, it's when when Tropic Square is a part of Satoshi Labs, doesn't mean that only Satoshi Labs uh, can benefit from it or can buy it. it. It will be available for or everybody. There are no borders. And companies that need to store security sensitive data on their devices, uh, for example, like PIN code, or perfect example are USB hardware key manufacturers. Uh, they are uh, a perfect end customer for our chip. And of course, um, from the industries, uh, IoT, automotive, and much more. Yeah, do you want to add something or Evgen? Evgen was quite precise. Uh, maybe yeah, some, I think uh, some, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, it's already been mentioned, like, you know, it's, uh, it's by the design process. The very important part is that we have started. <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, might not sound like a lot, but, uh, you know, during the, uh, the path we went, so, you know, looking okay, just one and a half year back or so, it's uh it's you know completely different set of knowledge we have right now so we just wanted we've been sure that we can't buy this secure element which is transparent and the, the you know established vendors will not talk to us that that was pretty pretty clear and all these ndas associated to that sort of are not compatible with the stress or use case so so there was no go and the only way was either okay waiting that somebody will do it or start doing that and we decided to start doing that it's more like uh, you know the follow this this suggestions like you know I think it's 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 called love it change it leave it so if you don't like something you know just try to love it maybe you can save your time effort and whatever if if you can't like it just try to change it and if you can't change it leave it so we are just in the phase that basically you know Satoshi didn't like the situation so. You know, Tropic Square has been established, and we're just working on, on changing the the things and the the learning, which is under under the hood or it's not really visible publicly, is that we're not alone on this path. There is you know bunch of the groups interested in having the uh, transparent security, and if you talk to the security experts, they they all agree that the transparency is really important and. Typically, they you know not really happy with this environment or the options technically which they only have um, uh, with the current closer solutions. But uh, you know it's a matter of time, and uh, at the same time, the importance of the securing the devices is is, is going up as well because uh, our lives are getting more and more digitalized, and basically people will start hopefully start realize soon, and it's uh, it's a task for. We're doing a good learning and awareness of this problem that uh, basically, you know, just using the gadgets as they are provided on the shelves of the shops, it's, it's not enough. So then it can easily put you, you know, some nice gadget which you can connect to your home network may easily compromise um, or, or make a trouble in, you know, to your life because basically you having a lot of uh, sensitive stuff in digital form and and the overall security or overall status of the security of the electronic devices is not that yet at the level it should be. So, and uh, you know, if if you have a, the same need, like, you know, you would like to, 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 to change something about the situation, just talk to us and, and we can, you know, we're just building the network of the experts and, uh, trying to basically, you know, change the environment a bit at least, and we will see how far or how many iterations it will require, but definitely this is a, this is the way how to do that, and, and we are fully committed to this path. Thank you, Jan, and uh, thank you for me personally for covering up um, uh, while I was trying to ask you the next question while I was muted. Um, this is this is going. Uh, we're staying in the in, in, within the topic, uh, but I think we lack uh, some context and the essentials ones, the essential ones. What I didn't ask you, what I'm uh, what I'm interested about, and what might be interesting for some of or some of our listeners is what is a secure element itself. Um, okay. First question. Second, if if I may add to it, so what are the specifics of its manufacturing and why? Um, why uh, a transparent and auditable part of it is so important? 
Okay. So, yeah, the secure element, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a chip, electronic chip, which is designed to serve some you know, uh, specific needs, like being, you know, secure in terms that typically you want to store the data and nobody should get access to this data, or you will generate, generate the keys and uh, you want to make sure that these keys, if they are generated in this piece of silicon, never leave this chip, because basically you want to make a the, the, the secure and sensitive domain a minimalistic in the system, because then basically you making your life easier in terms that you have a less to to protect. Yeah, so you want to keep a minimalistic uh, minimalistic area of the function is just to be secure, and these are dedicated to the secure elements. And the rest of the systems, like microcontrollers, are just re regular chips, not designed for the for the security operations. But then they can, in cooperation with this secure element chip, you know, provide a reasonable uh, cryptographic operations and in a secure way. So to do that, you do a design as a standard chip design, but then you need to put some some extra stuff, and the extra is. Uh, Actually, the way how you how you implement the the chip, the you know extras in terms of how which extra IP cores and detectors, attack detectors you are putting on the chip, etc. So basically, you adding extra layers, um, like uh, virtual layers in <laughs> to the chip. There also might be extra layers which might be a complete mesh which covers top of the chip and you know providing those uh, the at some cer certain attacks more difficult to carry on on the chip. And I think it's it's very important in this aspect to mention that uh, these chips are electronic devices. And there is a, you know, the natural thing that when they do the operation, intended operation, uh, they consume power. And the power consumption might be uh, dependent on the data which they are processing. And that's uh, something where then basically the, the chip can say, hey, I'm working with this secret value or something like that uh, indirectly. Yeah. So there are the techniques how to, how to get these numbers from the power, uh, power consumption profiles and, and some other techniques. So this is extras which you want to implement. Basically make sure that your data are not, uh, you know, process data or the power profile is not data dependent, etc. So you want to mask it or do some other tricks at the, at the cryptographic algorithms to make it so-called uh, side channel resistant or side channel robust. So these are the extras at, at the design side, and then the production is, is more or less uh, more or less uh, same because then you enter the foundry and the foundry will say there are some some again some security processes and uh, the vendors of the secure elements um, you know would uh, would tell you that yeah that there is a certain certifications on the chip and guarantees and and all these processes like you do it in secure environment but the thing is that when you design the chip and you implement everything at some point there is a data file which goes to Foundry and this data file contains the details, how the chip should be exactly done from, you know, bunch of layers uh, in the in the chip manufacturing process. So uh, this is really the sensitive part because, you know, we do design uh, stuff to, to make sure that the chip is not uh, leaking the sensitive data when it's in operation, but this is something what you have to have to, you know, secure as well. And that's what, Hopefully, you know, in, in longer run, uh, Tropic Square and, and the associated activities will, will change that we will be able to have a, be a transparent down to this level and, uh, you know, still implementing the hardware uh, in a secure, secure way when operating. Thank you. And uh, with regards to the process of how do secure elements work, um, can can you tell us in, in briefly uh, in, in 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 simple terms how do they work? And one also one question: Do they all follow the same methods? I mean, different secure elements. Um, if they would follow the same methods, all you'd have to do is uh, break one and then break 
and then you have break them all. So no. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's so, it's so simple. I think Jan, maybe you can add more to this topic. Yeah, well, you know, they not the same, but they they might behave like the same same chips, especially you know if you if you do the the designs for for this. Uh, uh, you know, high volume stuff like payment cards or chip IDs. You want to have a, a common API, so common set of functions from the uh, external world, and that's that's absolutely fine. So from from the user perspective, that they might feel that they behave like the same. But obviously, even in this uh, uh, in this product, it's like with any other product and families, there might be some some overlaps. Uh, depends, you know, on when the chip was introduced, because that's typically quite long. Uh, Long lifetime of these chips if they are not uh, broken or some, you know, somehow compromised. So, so there might be a you know designs in, in the production, or you can buy the chip which been designed ten years ago. Yeah, and and, uh, and then if there is a chip which been designed you know two years ago, there might be a slightly different standards and, and improvements. But in general, you want to make sure that what I said before, like uh, having this security domain inside this chip and having uh, some data which never leaves. Uh, uh, this chip, they only can be uh, used for the cryptographic operations on the chip, and uh, the outside world see the uh, see the result of this processing. And you want to make sure that the communication between this chip and uh, and the microcontroller is, is also encrypted, and there are multiple technologies or ways how to do that. You might have a symmetric crypto or a symmetric cryptography there, and uh, you know, exchange of the keys for every session or just fixed key for the session. There's just a bunch of the levels and, you know, it's uh, just, yeah, uh, adds to the complexity how to use that. And maybe it's uh, it's also the reason why, why you know, people, um, why people say that it's kind of difficult to use the secure elements. So, I believe that there is a uh, some some way to to standardize, but uh, it might be a difficult for for the you know product like like we are working on. So we are trying to to bring a reasonable level of security, which we believe is is, a, is a necessary for for our product. And then okay, we can discuss you know and and get a public review on this one whether it's enough or there are other applications which needs to be done in different way. But uh, yeah. Hopefully, there will be some standardization, and there will be others who will be doing this uh, this type of work as we do. Thanks. And what can you? Con uh, next question is um, more of uh, for our entertaining. Let's say, uh, what can you tell us about the security chip industry that might be surprising to 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 listeners? Okay, I hope I don't undercover uh, any secret, but. Uh... It's not as profitable as people might think. Um, <laughs> uh, the majority is covered by a few big players, but uh, they don't offer any open auditable solution. So that's why Tropic Square is here. And does security benefit from the transparent hardware? Um, you mentioned a lot that uh, one of the um, one of the negative sides of the industry is that it's closed and there is no transparent solution. Is there is any reason not to use a secure element that isn't completely transparent and auditable? If you can't verify, well, you need to trust. Oh, sorry, Jan. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, okay, okay then. Uh, by transparent solution, you see uh, under the hood and. Even after signing uh, NDAs, which are sometimes really strict, and it can be a problem for for the end user uh, with the existing suppliers, you won't have uh, access to all information you need uh, to verify security. And of course, you need a certain level of skills to that. But uh, to answer your question, yes, security benefits from transparent hardware by its very nature. Yeah, just just to be clear, I would add that basically transparency by itself doesn't mean necessarily that you have a more secure solution. And and uh, what we are you know you know doing is that we kind of uh, losing this 
benefits of obscurity, which means that we have to do something else because obviously the obscurity works to some extent. Yeah? So that there is a lot of effort to put to to you know cover the implementations and all this stuff. So for you know some population or some some people it's enough. It's bringing enough security. But obviously there are the other people which even without knowing the details of the chip function and, and chip implementation can can break the chip and uh, reverse engineer and everything. So to me, to me, that means that basically just being only obscure and not saying how I'm going to implement that, you just bringing some extra barrier, which might be, you know, work out in number of, in some effort, like number of days or hours, you need extra to, to break the chip. But it's not uh, something what, what will stop people to break the chip. So I think it's, it's better to just be transparent and say, hey, we are going to implement it this way. So what do you think about it? And uh, if there is something really stupid or obvious, which will be breaked quickly in the end, you know, why to do produce the chip? So, so I mean, that's, uh, that's what transparent is. transparency is enabling us and uh, that's you know, bringing the different mindset for sure, which is not easy for established players, maybe. But uh, I don't think that uh, the, the established players don't like the transparency. Basically, there are some other barriers and, and, and the certifications and, and so on. And their existing uh, business models, basically, they, they, if you are selling the IP core, which is uh, certified, and the requirement of certification is that you can't disclose the implementation, then basically you would be losing this investment there. So I think that the, the way forward is to find a solution where uh, closed source design can coexist with open source designs on the actual implementation. And at least, you know, finding the way that the Jan, we lost you, unfortunately. Mm. Maybe, Evshen, I can address you the the question which is uh, coming from from the previous one to which Jan was giving us a response and we'll get back to the previous question uh, with with Jan. Um, so it is it correct to say that it's the, the, the what you're working with and your fi final final goal is a long long run that, that needs uh, several rounds of uh, testing improvements uh, audits from uh, from the contributors testing testing uh, or it's how, how, how what is your uh, what, what is how, how how long are the stages and do we do we speak uh, years decades you mean uh, or you are asking uh, when will be the product prepared uh, for the market do I understand the question right uh yes and uh, um w do you expect it to be um a, a, a long long way until um until the chip is in the way that you envision it okay of course there will be uh, some prototype phases it's it's not that we finish the work, the coding, uh, etc., the implementing of the all IPs, and then the foundry will send us the final chip and the work is done. No, uh, the process takes much longer. And uh, that's something we planned for the whole next year or till end of the next year. And of course, uh, in every stage of the prototyping, uh, we will be testing certain levels of, of the development uh, of the chip so the first one or one of the first ones will be an FPGA prototype then we plan to have uh, uh, some silicon and 130 nanometers uh, which is not the final uh, which is just the final uh, sorry uh, size because it will be 55 nanometers but uh, it will help us to test certain functionalities of the chip. And hopefully end of next year, the fourth quarter of the next year, we will have a 
prototype for Satoshi Labs, which will be available to test uh, in the Trezor. Does this answer your question? Yes, pretty much. Thank you very much. Uh, Jan, we have you here again. Uh, would you like to uh, pick up on where we lost you? We were discussing the importance yeah, of yeah. the uh, transparency. Yeah, I'm not sure at, at which point uh, my connection dropped, but yeah, I will I will just summarize very quickly. So yeah, I was about to say transparent doesn't necessarily mean more secure. It's clear, but uh, we believe that it's a uh, it's really different mindset thing to, to develop the transparent implementation and uh, yeah you know just doing it in, in the in the you know uh, the obscure way doesn't doesn't serve us to, doesn't mean that you will get a you know chip which can be broken broken so we want to be transparent and actually we working with partners and experts in the field so it's just to, to not Make the impression that we do everything ourselves. You know, it's uh, it's uh, sort of arrangements and and getting the the same minded people, and you know, building the network of the of the people who kind of can help with this transparency. And hopefully, for the future, there will be a a you know influence of the existing environment where the transparent and, and open source uh, implementations will not be. Uh, seen as a, as a something you know less secure by design, and it will rather be evaluated based on the actual implementation and stuff like that, not just by some administrative uh, decisions that somebody many many years ago in completely different context said that basically to, to design a secure system you have to keep everything secret and, and so on. So hopefully the the environment and industry will change and a nice you know. Benefit is that we can we can we can talk about this this work and this chip, and we already see you know the the the, the, the benefits of, of this like a lot of academy institutions and other you know security testing clubs etc. They kind of like this approach and hopefully it will end up with some sort of um, say on the for the design uh, design formalization of the process because the fact that the the design industry been uh, has been closed for years in in this particular area there are no uh, easily you know flowable guidance how to design secure chips so it's it's kind of um, exercise to find what is appropriate and as people are not allowed to talk about that this, this you know minimal exchange of information so some of them are at the, the universities obviously and the research institutions but what we have here as a, as a big potential of the tropic square project or side effect of the tropic square project being public is that basically these people can can talk to each other and uh, bring a better solutions even for their closer solutions but influenced by the open source and and transparency and this is actually happening. Thank you. Uh, and maybe let's go to even more abstract level um, and discuss the a general way of the chip design process. Can you tell us about it? Uh, for a person like me, it's mostly a stress because uh, I'm not so deeply technically proficient as the experts in the development team like Lan, Jan and the others. Uh, so I think that's a question for Jan. Yeah, I, I you know, quite like to, I, I sort of assume that people can understand how the software is done, like that somebody types some text and then run a tool compiler and provide some binary, which a CPU processor, which is actually ASIC chip, can understand and do some functions with it. And I, I like to say that the chip design is very similar uh, to some extent, at least uh, in the initial part, which is this functional description and implementation, which is what we're working on right now. Because we using uh, languages which are called hardware description languages, or you may heard about Verilog or DHDL, which are the traditional wonders, bunch of the new, new stuff as well, new languages. And we actually do type the, the piece of code, piece of text, which describes the functionality. And then we can run it through tools, like simulate the functionality, see the actual activity of the signals, etc. And uh, then it's 
process through another tools, which is called synthesis. You know, when you from this source code description, you will get a netlist, which represents a schematic. So it's more like electronic design at this point, but still just the function and another set of tool and activities make sure that you can place these. Uh, you know, the, the, the netlist is represented with, with logic and and ors and, and, and similar blocks, like simple logic functions for the digital design, which are defined by the technology library. So basically, you have to select your foundry where you will be uh, producing the chips, and they will tell you, okay, this is, for example, 28 nanometers, so you will get a design kit library, and the synthesis translate your text, which is quite generic to uh, schematic, which using this uh, technology cells for 28 nanometers, for example. And with this, then you just need to place it, everything place and connect. So it's more like, it's, it's like, a, like a PCB design, but with a different scale and again, you know, done through the tools. But in the end, you will get this description, which you provide, which is called GDS2. It's a final file, which has a full recipe how to make a chip in given technology. So that's that's how I like say that it's like a programming and I sort of invite people to try to look at the, at the hardware design and chip design particularly it's, it's it's a lot of fun. Sounds like fun, but still still too hard. I can I cannot imagine myself seeing um, being being comfortable in that sea of yours. Um, okay, but... so so I'll put it in another way. So <laughs> if you have a, something complex, you have to break it down. <laughs> and if you if yeah. you can manage it or understand it, then you can start to building back again. But if not, then again, go down, break down, break down, simplify, simplify, simplify. It. When it's simple enough, uh, then you can use this function as a basic building block and trying to you know go back and build bigger systems out of it. So it's more like a you know, yeah Lego kind of approach. Like you have a certain function blocks which you want to reuse and replicate and uh, you can build a cryptographic scheme out of it. You might have a system like multiplier, basically some some piece of, of silicon represented in the in the text description, which know how to multiply two numbers, for example. Yeah, and you can say how how big the numbers should be, etc. So it's it's a lot of fun, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jan, for you, maybe Evgen, for you too, uh, what have been some of the biggest learning experience uh, so far uh, during your uh, your road in this industry? Everything. <laughs> you know, with Tropic Square, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely the, the thing that you have to start doing something. And you might not be, you know, correct first time, right? But, uh, but... Uh, it's a learning and uh, you never know what will happen tomorrow, right? So if, if you if you do not start, you will never move. But if you start moving step by step, that's uh, that's what what we need to do. And, you know, the, the fact that we can say what we are up to, what we are doing is definitely helping in this area because, you know, every time we did some, some announcement, something like that, Always somebody came to us and said, hey, okay, I'm working on this one. What do you think about this? You know, would this be helpful to you, etc." And I don't think that these are the contacts or people we would ever find through the Google or, or natural network around us. So definitely it's, uh, it's a huge learning. You know, the, the fact that, you know, the, the area we are working on, like operating on the security, it's a, it's a really tough one because it's not like... A, that you do something and you are you are finished, right? So it's uh, it's rather a process. So we have to continuously you know evaluate and checking it and so on. So I don't know. It's not like uh, you are done. Probably never, because always security is sort of catching up with, with the other aspects, which puts the attacks you know more affordable, easy to do, or technology improvement makes them you know makes possible what wasn't. Uh, realistic couple of days ago or was way too expensive a uh, few years ago and so on. So this is really the path and uh, yeah, it has to be carefully you know, followed like step by step. And what sparked the idea? 
the idea came from stick and slash um, in many years ago i can still remember the talks really five six years ago about making own chip uh, but the serious intention started during the second half of the year 2019 i can i know the guys did some research on their own but uh, since it wasn't their main focus it got to the point where we said uh, we needed to do it properly and full time and that led to an invitation for a coffee from slash and you know the rest yeah we know now <laughs> and going go, going back to to the um, uh, to the chip and um, and manufacturing processes uh, the next question from me and i would like to mention to our audience before i ask it that uh i still have some questions in reserve but if you want to uh hop on um with your question uh feel free to request becoming a speaker i'll add you and um we can all chat uh, next question is are there any specifics uh, you could share related to the implementation of the traffic square chip testing how will the chip be incorporated into devices? And is there any way to upgrade security for a device that is lacking a security chip now? Yeah, so we, you know, currently we, we see the chip as a uh, standalone like external device doing those, this secure element type of functions. The package is similar to other secure elements on the market or, or serial flash memories, which allows us to be a you know, drop-in replacement for the existing design. So if somebody has already the design which which features some secure element, you know, they might easily migrate to, to our solution and test it. Just one thing, the other thing is that yeah, I mentioned before that basically this is pretty standard. So pretty much every microcontrol has such communication or is easy to, 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 to implement. And then uh, you can extend the regular microcontroller with uh, the uh, secure features by the solution. So the primary focus is to is to do this uh, this as, as a as a dedicated chip which you can connect to any microcontroller you want. So we will be very flexible here. And also there is a, a plan to do the the secu uh, sorry, SD card uh, form factor or SD card packaging type of thing. So, but uh, for us it means like you know take the same silicon and just do the slightly different package instead of being an eight pin chip is will be a SD card. Nice. Nice. Evgen, do you want to add something to it? I think uh, Jan covered it pretty perfectly, so nothing from me to add. Yeah, pretty and perfectly. Uh, maybe I would like to invite you to talk about money. No. Um, for those who don't know, uh, you recently raised four million euros in funding for the chip. How will that money be applied to Tropic Square's mission? Um, four million euros is a lot of, from a certain point of view. Uh, yes, of course, you can party hard the whole year, or you can develop a secure element and build a successful startup. The first possibility was on the table, but uh, I think it was Stig who said no. Uh, so. In the end, we decided to work first and party after. <laughs> With that amount of money, we will be able to bring the first chip on the market. So to finish the development and, and production and start selling uh, the first auditable, open, transparent, secure element. OK, so no party. Only uh, it will. There will be a lunch party, of course, of course, and I think we will do some parties during the process of the testing and the sampling. But not in four million, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I prefer to spend money on, on technology and the people. All right. We will, All right. We will spend it on the people for the drinks. <laughs> okay. All right, I for the development. Uh, then, then the next question, how does one go from off-the-shelf components to a custom chip? What are the limitations of the process? There are some. I think at first you have to step up from your comfort zone. And uh, of course, when the off-the-shelf solution is not uh, sufficient for your needs, uh, then you 
if you have a great idea and want to take a benefit from it uh, for your product. So that's a way, why, or I hope it answers your question. I think, Jan, you can add something more. Yeah, well, I would say that, you know, that doing custom chip is, is pretty standard thing to do in the, in the chip industry and the reasons for that are various, you know, like you, you want to have a control over the supply of the chips, which, you know, getting quite important these days. Or you want to address specific longevity requirements, like you want to make sure that you will have a chips for next 20 years. Uh, the cost optimization, when, when basically you invest more upfront to do the chip, but then you will get a lower unit cost. Obviously, you have to have volume to, to, to sell these things, but that, that's all you know, inputs to these um, equations and discussions uh, at each custom chips design start. And yeah, it's 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 pretty useful because during what you are doing essentially from technical standpoint, you integrating things closer together. So you saving area, saving power, increasing performance, you know, lowering costs. So that's typical the aspects which everybody is happy with. But then you, yeah, as Sergeant said, so maybe a bit of uh, stepping out of comfort zone and do the heavy lifting, design the chip or find a partner who can help with that. But it's not that uh, unusual, I would say. And what about? And the... actually, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Well, I, I want to say this disclaimer that I, I, I said before, you know, I was, I was in this industry you know, for quite a long time, so doing the ASICs for customers, and it's, 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 it's typical business model. So it's called fabulous uh, design houses. So you basically translate the customer specialist into the silicon, and um, that's that's good business, which. You know, quite few people are, are in this one. So the difficulties, you know, there's a bunch of the stuff which is uh, tied, for example, to the technology node, uh, which you going to use, but uh, not all the chip developments needs to go to this, you know, bleeding edge seven, five nanometers, stuff like that, like Apple and, and other high performance uh, chips requires. And this opens the a nice market window like uh, for a lot of designs actually the benefit or the sweet spot for custom chip design is in the older technologies because they are cheaper more affordable you not you know getting the, the best achievable figures but it's it's appropriate for the project you're working on and again uh, it depends whether it's uh, just the digit logic or it's a mixture of the digital and analog and so on so if, if you do the rf there might be a different uh, different technology node Kind of uh, you know, uh, sweet spot for your solution, and uh, also, the, and it's something what we went through last year when we were you know, selecting the technology. Like you can't do a chip with just your piece of digital logic, so you have to have some other IP cores, like power supplies, you know, clock source and, and IO cells, etc., and maybe some specific IP cores which do some functions. Like in our case, it's a flash memory core. And so on, and uh, these are fixed uh, designs for particle technology. So th this equation gets quite complicated, or it's rather the metrics. Like you have a wish list of the uh, functional IPs and stuff like that. What you want to put on the place or on the chip, and then you have to find the right supplier for this one. And if you look at the suppliers, you know that there are dedicated portals where you can read that uh, uh, that the suppliers as everything, you know, every single IP you can imagine that they, they will get. So you say, okay, yeah, that's 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 fine. Let's let's do it. And then you start talking to them and they will say, okay, well, we have only this technology and this technology characterized or qualified. And, you know, if, if you want in, in your technology, perhaps it's not that ready yet, but we can we can discuss about about the timeline, how to do that and so on. So, so it's a lot of, um, uh, you know, Lot of work uh, on the background, which is not visible, and yeah, quite tricky to, to get the right contacts this, to this ecosystem and environment and, and uh, you know, information which you, you need to have all together to make an informed decision okay, what is the appropriate uh, solution for this task? And what are the, op the main obstacles in the development process then? Well, obstacles in the way. I mean that what I just mentioned are quite obstacles. You know, that's that's uh, that's definitely time-consuming part. And uh, obviously, if you if you do the same type of designs and just replicating this stuff in, in established environment, it's uh, 
it's probably easier. But for us last year, you know, when we started talking to people, it took time to, you know, uh, convince them that we are really serious, that we are going to make this chip, although it may sound like a crazy idea, it's, it's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the obstacle. I mean, on the design side, the, the, the biggest obstacle is to understand what you have to do, what you should design. Yeah, so if, you, if you're going from, uh, from this you know, functional requirements or description, which I, I tend to call a wish list of the customer to, to some realistic uh, set of requirements which you can implement, obviously there is a trade of like time, cost, and quality. Always you have to balance and optimize for, for a certain aspect, you know, over, over the others. And then you might say that, you know, you're dealing with people and then the communication is probably the most, most difficult one. But I, I tend to say that once we know what we are doing, it's easy to implement and do. But uh, typically the process where until you get to the point that it's absolutely clear what it has to be done, what, what, what is appropriate and so on, that's, that's, the, that's the tough part. And you can imagine that... Uh, you know, it's a multidisciplinary area. So in our case, it's there is some sort of product, uh, might say product development, product requirements, which constitute some you know, features of the chip and so on. Then there is a actually cryptographic aspects, like you know which crypto functions should be there and how to implement them. Then then there is the uh, side channel resistance because it's not an automatic link that you have to. Or, in this case, we are pretty serious and uh, about the physical security of the chip, which might not, might not be a case for every application with just some crypto algorithm. Yeah. So these are the tiny differences, and you end up uh, kind of managing or uh, working uh, in the environment with uh, multiple disciplines, and you have to uh, communicate and get everybody on the same page to to understand basically what what we are up to. But I guess that this is pretty similar in, in every other area, right? So more or less. Yeah. We are people and that's that's it. Yeah, and giving all that, is it um is it even possible to make Tropic Square chip fully open source from day one, for example, or it's also a, a long going pro process? In certain conditions like um, unlimited funds, uh, plenty of time. Uh, availability of uh, experienced people without uh, an excited customer behind your back, like Satoshi Labs, <laughs> who is every week asking when the chip will be available. Yeah, it, it's possible. Joking, of course, a little bit. <laughs> and what parts are closed then? Uh, if 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 we're talking about the process again, uh, I'm, I'm based based on your joke. It's not impossible to make Tropic Square fully open source on day one. So, following question is what parts are closed? You don't develop the chip from scratch. Obviously, you have some foundational parts you develop, right? Yes, correct. And that's that's I already touched on that. That basically, when you select the technology, you have to get you know something from the third parties to 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 do the implementation. So, in our case. Uh, we focusing on the you know are designed uh, for the digital part of the chip, which is the the place where the customer data are are processed. So it's everything from the interface to as the internal memory, which is the flash memory and it's it's third party IP core. So we can't disclose the actual implementation of the flash memory, but what we can do is to anchor the data before we store them in that memory. So, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, and, uh, you know, even if uh, it's possible to extract the data from the flash memory, still the data will be uh, encrypted. And then you have to have some other stuff like clock source and, and power supplies and which are analog IP calls and some specific, uh, you know, security related IP calls, which are the attack detectors like a glitch detector and, and um, laser uh, detectors and stuff like that. So, so these are the typically IP calls we're getting from the from the third party like, through random number generator, puff core and stuff like that. But again, the reason is that basically they don't exist in an open, transparent way on the market these days.
So if we don't go this path, there's no chip at all. So we just decide, okay, let's do it this way and we will see in, in, in future. Hopefully there will be a way to get it more 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 open. But if we succeed in this level, then probably it's not really need to do go uh, that far and be my focus on making it more robust the, the, in the domain which we currently um, you know, identified as a, as a critical for for a transparent part of the design. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you, thank you for the for, for, uh, thir um, thorough response. Um, I, on my end, have one last question reserved. I uh, would like to again mention that if any one of our listeners would like to hop on uh, with the comments or chat with Jan or Evgen or, or, ask the, or ask a question, please request becoming a speaker. I'll add you. And if not, uh, we will call it a day. And so last question is uh, about the future plans. What is the roadmap for Trophy Square? How long will stages of testing, production, pre-order, collaboration with other companies each take? Can you tell us? I mentioned it uh, in, in some other questions before, but... Uh, yeah, just to summarize. Yeah, to summarize it, uh, we discussed it yesterday again with Slashstick and Stepan. Uh, so the optimistic plan is to deliver in Q4 2022 engineering samples production and we are still looking for partners or customers who have transparency, auditability, and security at the first place uh, to get in touch with us and don't wait till we finish the development and just write us and we would like to meet you and, of course, discuss with you your needs and what, what can we offer to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today and for for this for this chat. I learned a lot today, which I didn't know about the uh, the chip uh, chip design and the secure element and Tropic Square, your company, and everything you do uh, and all your work on it. Uh, that was super interesting. Um, we don't have any questions from the audience, and I assume that we might we might um, call it a day. Thank you very much again. It was the uh, second round of uh, Trezor Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, just to announce that next week we will meet with James Nolop and we will talk about uh, how to stay secure in the Bitcoin ecosystem and how to stay away from scams and phishings. Uh, it was a great pleasure talking to you, Evshen and Jan. Uh, thank you to everybody who stayed with us and listened to this spaces. I hope to hear you soon. Thank you to all. Yep. That you stayed. Wish you a nice evening. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.